Hello all. Welcome to just Diary of a Disabled. Oh, I'm a little overwhelmed. I uh, I want to do uh, some filing and I'm staying on top of my paperwork. <laughs> As I get my mail in the mail, I'm actually filing it. I'm only, I only had like two or three pieces of paper I had to put away. And I was like, okay, that's too much backlogged. I gotta get logged. And as I was doing that, I came across a folder that I didn't really pay much attention to, I guess, earlier. And uh, it uh, gave me a rude awakening of, because uh, I've been kind of floundering and thinking, I'm like, I don't know what I need to write to my freaking lawyer. I don't know what I need to try to do to fight the VA Chiari malformation case. And as I'm experiencing pain and problems with bulging discs right now, it's like bringing back my medical PTSD. And it took, it took me 10 years to get surgery for the problem that started the whole freaking shebang to begin with. The whole reason I got medically discharged from the Navy, the, the being like, felt like a failure for years because I, my body failed me because I couldn't get out of pain in order to do my job in the Navy. And I wanted to do 20 years. And I didn't, I had like an identity crisis, I guess, at age 30 when I got out of the service. Um, I just was like, I don't know what to do with myself. Uh, I had my entire career planned out for me and my body failed me. I'm disabled and I'm only 30 years old and I'm having doctors tell me there's no reason I should be having that much pain from bulging discs. If you could take a hundred people off the street and uh, give them MRIs, m majority of them will have degenerative disc disease and it just happens as you age. Almost everybody has it, honestly. Almost everybody has degenerative disc disease. I'm not trying to minimize it. I know it's painful. Boy, do I know it's painful because it's causing me problems right now because of my spinal cord issues. And I now have evidence. <laughs> I have MRI evidence that I came across from when I served and I'm so overjoyed. I'm so overjoyed today. This stack of papers right here. It says basically in order. I had an MRI in uh, May 2008. The findings. The vertebral bodies are normal in height and alignment. The disc spaces are normal. Mild loss of the normal cervical lordosis, which means the, the curvature in the neck, which is lordosis. Um, so mild loss of my cervical lordosis is noted, so my neck isn't as curved as it should be. Um, the soft tissues are normal. There is no fracture or subluxation. Subluxation is a dislocation or a slight dislocation, maybe not a full-blown one, but a partial. Um, there are no cervical ribs. Well, I hope I do have cervical ribs. <laughs> that says that, whatever. There are no cervical ribs. Mandibular fixation hardware is noted in the region of the mental foramen. I had a chin implant. Well, they cut my my skull and unlike the chin of my my uh, the chin, they cut the bone all the way across and put a little metal plate in between my chin bone and the rest of my skull. Yeah, it's quite crazy. I lost all sensation in my bottom lip. It's numb com completely. The nerves never grew back all the way. So I get a little drooly sometimes. <laughs> Not so bad anymore. I have better control over my over my lip, but like for the longest time, I could not tell I would have a noodle or something on my face, and my cousin would be like, "Hey, you again?" I'm like, "Oh, thanks. <laughs> Sorry." <laughs> so so awkward. Um, but anyways, so that's what that's talking about. Uh, subsequent flexion and extension views demonstrate no abnormal vertebral body movements. Conclusion, normal cervical spine radiographs, post-surgical changes to the mandible. Boom. That's it from May 2008. So there's really nothing abnormal seen in you know, that time frame. Then we jump to uh, February 2009. This has the entire radiology report, report from my MRI. Uh, 
limited images of the paracervical soft tissues are unremarkable. The alignment of the cervical spine is normal. So I guess my alignment had no more lordosis issues. So that improved. Cool. Bone marrow demonstrates no signal characteristics. The craniocervical junction and cervical junction of spinal cord appears unchanged. Better appreciated on the current examination is this tiny central canal, which is in retrospect is visualized and unchanged from prior exam. C2 to C3, no disc herniation, everything looks great. C3, C4, no disc herniation looks great. C4, C5, no disc herniation, everything's great. C5, C6. There continues to be a small midline disc protrusion, which does not contact transversine cord. The spinal stenosis, the foramina are pent bilaterally, no significant change. So yeah, I have a little bit of a disc protrusion at C5, C6, when everything was just fine before, but I had a reversal of my neck a little bit. So, hmm. So this is, from May 2008 to February 2009, something happened. I have a little bit of a disc bulge. And then C6, C7, broad-based disc protrusion and appears unchanged from prior exam. No spinal stenosis, everything's fine. C7, T1, no disc herniation, everything's fine. So, C5, C6, very little teeny protrusion. C7, broad-based disc protrusion and appears unchanged. Um, so I don't know where all the other uh, radiographs are that mentions that stuff originally at the C6, C7. I don't know where it's at. Lost in military records somewhere, probably quite conveniently. Um, everything looks fine around November 2008. Um, uh, yeah. Okay. So let's jump to October 20th, 2010, another year later. So I have something from 2008, 2009, nothing, 2010. I got out in June, 2010. So after this, um, oh wait, no, sorry. The VA. This was right after I got out. My bad. I can't do math. <laughs> June, July, August, September, October. So five months. Five months after I got out of service. Here's this MRI. Uh, the cerebellar tonsils are mildly pointed in appearance and examined and extend six millimeter below the foramen magnum. Suspicious for Chiari one variant. It just says suspicious. There is no syrinx. There is no strengthening, straightening of the normal cervical lordosis. Alignment is otherwise normal. But now, when we go to C6, C5, C5, C6, sorry, my dyslexia. There is a posterior central disc protrusion with a facement of the ventral fecal sac and deformity of the ventral cord. Suggestion of increased T2 signal adjacent to the bulge in the paramedian cord may represent cord edema. No neural formal narrowing. So how do we go from 2009 nothing seen to 2010 seen? things are just progressing at this point seriously like it goes from normal ish to bulging to even more bulging that was c5 c6 level when the last one before that only said a small midline why is it progressing why is it progressively bulging more it does not make sense because I didn't know I had tethered spinal cord at this point. Um, so there's more bulges. It's coming to be more of a problem. 
C6, C7 that had like the most of the bulge last time that says now there is a small posterior central disc protrusion and minimal central canal narrowing. No something narrowing. And then it says impression. Posterior disc protrusion at C5, C6 with significant central canal narrowing, cord deformity, and suspected focal cord edema. Why is the VA denying me that my service didn't aggravate this? Why am I fighting so hard? Because I have within a year of service after I get discharged that I can get service connection for anything that the service caused. This was only five months after I got out of service that I got this better MRI to tell me I had Chiari malformation. Well, it says suspected. And then I continuously have MRIs after that. They cannot say it's congenital. It wasn't congenital because it was never seen while I was in service. So either they're hiding something and purposely didn't point out the Chiari while I was in service, or they didn't see anything at all because I don't have a congenital defect. It was not seen. So, weird only this, why am I fighting for my service connection for this Chiari malformation? I did not have it while I was in service. I got it after I got out of service because I had a spinal cord tethering. And what I felt that one day that I was running, I have so many things to correlate now. I, it, it just makes sense. The day that I was running, I had pain shooting out down from the base of my skull all the way down my body, down my spine. Something gave way my connective tissue from the high impact running because I was running and it was only that I felt that zing, zing, zing feeling every time I took a step and that was damaging my spinal cord. I, that bulge or my, the bulge caused the tethering or I already had it tethered and it made the tether symptomatic with the pain. Because I never had pain before. I could have had an asymptomatic tethered cord, but it was not until I got a bulging disc and it showed that my disc did not stay small. It was small in service and it progressively protruded more until it started messing with my spinal cord even more and became more symptomatic throughout the years afterwards and just going to college, fighting the VA, give me MRIs. I yelled at my doctor multiple times, give me a goddamn MRI. <laughs> Excuse my language, I don't mean to take the Lord's name in vain. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, uh, but I was so frustrated. <laughs> so this is what happened. I, I, I now understand the timeline of what happened and how things progressed once I had a bulging disc in my neck. I didn't always have a bulging disc. It was aggravated by service and running and my connective tissue was unstable at the point that I felt it zinging down my back, that pain. I had now since felt that zinging in my spine two more times. When I was recovering from my first tethered cord surgery, I felt it. I felt it tighten up on the right side of my body and I've had a uh, neuropathy and paresthesia on the right side of my body ever since. Uh, no doctor has been able to explain that to me because I never had a stroke. It felt like a stroke to me because I felt it travel up all the way up my spine. And then the third time I felt it was when I fell on my tailbone in December when I bulged my discs in my thoracic and lumbar. I'm 100% tethered again. There's no reason I should be feeling this pain with these bulges because after I got my surgery last time, I did not feel my pain from my cervical disc bulge. There's still, cer my, my cervical is still jacked up. I don't have pain and symptoms from them though. And now I think the symptoms are different with my tethered spinal cord only slightly and that's in location. 
but it's about the same location too. Everything is so tight in my thoracic. And the fact that I have bursitis in my left shoulder and bursitis in my right hip, that makes it extremely unbalanced and unstable in my body. So bursitis here, so the ligaments are overstretched here, and then if those get overstretched, they're putting stress on other parts, like the first rib, that helps pull that out, and then that pulls my ribs out. <laughs> and then uh, my then here pulls out my SI joint all the time. And so then I get my lower back pain. And because of the uh, bursitis, that bulging disc, like, just it's too tight between those areas. Uh, tight and loose. And not the right places. <laughs> so, um, I have poor body mechanics. And I can't handle the extra pressure on my spinal cord from these bulges. It's extremely painful. Because my body can't find a way to gain balance. My spinal cord's too tight and I need to have it cut loose. I really hope my doctor will allow this surgery and do it for me. Please continue to pray for me to get this surgery. I need it so bad. Until then I have to fight for my right to have pain medication with a new doctor here coming up. Pray and wish me luck on that one too. That's going to be hard. I deserve compassionate health care and empathy, empathy from these doctors of the fix, the, all the pain I experience on the day to day with these issues and knowing where the pain comes from and knowing what helps my pain and for any doctor to, to deny the treatment that helps me is so uncompassionate. <laughs> I have the MRI timeline. I wasn't born with Chiari. Uh, the last time I had it measured before my uh, most recent fall MRIs and after did the MRIs after that fall, I can see the difference. I have a cord deformity in my thoracic. It only says mild, but it doesn't matter. Doctors just totally look by anything that says mild. Mild is not good enough for doctors a lot of the time. It needs to be like severe or moderate for them to do any interventions, especially with surgery, unless you play their game. They play their game of do, yes, I will take this antidepressant medication because it helps pain too off label. Oh, it doesn't help me. Okay, give me this medication, please. Okay, well, that doesn't help either. Well, help me get this medication. Okay, thank you. It takes a lot of trial and error. You have to play their games. You have to go and like poof up that doctor's ego at times. Um, have to play dumb. Like I don't know anything sometimes. Uh, I'm a professional patient and actress. I have learned through the years of what I need to do to help myself. It's ridiculous, the steps I have to do. But at least I'm informing you of how to go about it too. If you're in any kind of chronic pain, you gotta play the game. But I really don't recommend pain medication. It has so many uh, side effects on its, on its own. I really don't want to be on them. They're no fun. Uh, but let me shift gears because that was my good news about my story. I now finally know how to write my story to my lawyer, to my doctor. I was going to be like, you need to look over this information, look at these reports. This is what I see. This is what I suspect happened in my words. This is how it's impacted me. And it delayed me 10 years to get that surgery. I'm not letting it take that long again. If this is the case though, I really do think I detethered during my recovery of my first one in 2020. 
it was like two months after surgery, I retethered. But I didn't get problem, like super symptomatic until the bulges in my discs. I could have lived a lot longer in that pain pattern. Um, but to know that I'm going to be pain, like close to pain free after that surgery gives me hope. And it gives me motivation to keep going at it because I was just so happy to not have that tightness in my spine for just a little while. It was heaven to not have all that pain, all this pain all the time. <sighs> so, never give up. There's answers out there. It's just, are you willing to dig that up? Are you willing to go this far? Salvation's there. <laughs> you gotta want it enough. You gotta want it. So, anyways, like I said, shifting gears. <laughs> Tears of happiness, I'm telling you. stand up anyways. I got something in my mail. I already put it inside the box so I don't lose this. So that came in. Kinetic circle is what it says. <laughs> This is my unboxing video for my EDC. VIP goodies. Got this fantastic trippy change color stuff magnet. my freaking PC tower. Yeah. Woo! My camp EDC sticker from my RV trailer. I came with a EDC heavy metal keychain. A cute made in China pouch. This is on the packaging. <laughs> little little pouch guy. A deck of playing cards. And my VIP wristband. And a lot of stickers. <laughs> it also comes with this uh fantastic pamphlet about all the different stages. I mean, I'm getting chills just looking at the pamphlet because I, I can't wait to be back underneath the electric sky. Thousands of people show up for EDC every year. <laughs> so it's not like anything I've ever experienced and the awe of, I'm just, I'm very excited for this. So excited. <laughs> so that's my unboxing of my EDC VIP package. I got my RV parking pass. I have to make sure I keep all of this stuff together because I will lose it. I am a freaking space cadet some days really my brain fog is awful so I think these are pretty bad bad A stickers 
bad ash. Because they're pretty heavy duty. I think they're pretty quality stickers. House music all day long. EDC. Nocturnal Wonderland. Bolt of Beauty. Insomniac who puts on the festival. Rainbow. Peace, Love, and EDC. Insomniac Records. Insomniac. This is my favorite one. Hard. This is definitely going right on front of my freaking... PC right here. My other one. I'm gonna rave till the grave. That's right, I am. F93. Escape. Beyond Wonderland. Apocalypse Zombie Land. Base Rush. Countdown. Base Con. So, pretty much the majority of all the events that they put on. <laughs> Insomniac. Uh, I will probably never go to EDC ever again because it's so expensive. Um, if I am to go to any other festivals, I think I may go to the one in the Gorge. The Beyond Wonderland up in Washington, Oregon border. Mostly. That's, uh, that's my next goal since I have my Alice in Wonderland sleeve it's really my freaking it's my goal to go to Beyond Wonderland next I believe it's just sad that this last year's festival uh some people got uh injured um beyond repair this last uh Beyond Wonderland in the gorge and it's really sad it's sad that there's violence that erupts sometimes and Especially in those big places. That's, that's scary. Uh, you know, and concert goers and festival goers just want to be safe. And sometimes there's just not enough security to get things taken care of. I don't know. But may they rest in peace. Cheers. They loved, they ended up going out how they, what they loved doing. And that's all I can only ever hope for too is I hope I go out with whatever I'm doing and I'm loving. <laughs> So anyways, that was my unboxing of my EDC. Uh, stay tuned. I'm going to do one with my outfits. Uh, I've got to wait until a little bit more swelling goes down. Um, but I will try them on and I will be modeling them all for you. See what y'all think of my uh, EDC outfits. <laughs> I still got to get my, uh... gosh, I still have so many things to do. So, we'll see what happens. I love y'all. Keep smiling. Smiling is contagious. And, uh, just never give up hope. Throughout the struggles, the ups and downs in life, we're all just trying to find our balance. And, uh, sometimes it just takes us longer to get there. So, just don't give that hope. You got this. Peace out, y'all.